Welcome to this Blue Christmas service, a time when we can, in the company with each other, acknowledge the sadness we feel at Christmas time. Memories of past experiences, the pain of present reality, it can be overwhelming. Recognizing that this is not a season of joy for everyone, in this service, we will acknowledge the pain, the loneliness, the sorrow we may feel. We will also reflect on God's presence in our midst, the invitation to release our burdens, receive God's good gifts, and the possibility of rejoicing and our great sign of hope, the Holy Child of Bethlehem. We pray that all of us will find hope and comfort in knowing that we are not alone. Join with me in prayer. O come, O come, Emmanuel, this day as we mourn our loss, acknowledge our loneliness and cry out in our despair. We need you to save us, to free us, to heal us from all that keeps from the fullness of life, and refresh our longing hearts, and restore the broken pieces within us to wholeness. We join together and say, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. For God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I'm exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. When we were little children, we were told, stand still, sit still, 
be quiet. Being still is hard for children. By the time we are adults, we've usually managed to stand, stand still, sit still, and be quiet on the outside. But on the inside, we are in constant motion. Inside, we pace back and forth, wander and wander and wander some more, and have a whole host of fears and worries, what ifs and whys. Whispering, screaming, and crying out. Being still is hard for adults. And yet stillness is what our God asks of us and hopes for us this night. Stillness, not because we are annoying or troublesome children, but stillness so that, so that we can know our God, Emmanuel, our God, with us. You've probably noticed that the more you want to stop something, like being unstill, the harder it is to do. So rather than fight our inner unstillness, let's allow God to use it to know Emmanuel, God with us. Our earliest prayer is our breath. In scripture, the words for breathe, wind and spirit are the same. Our life breath, the wind blowing, and the presence of God's spirit all come together in the air that fills our lungs on our in-breath and then is released from our bodies on our out-breath. Our very breathing is a simple, natural prayer that we have been praying since birth. Let's use our breath, this natural way to pray, to bring us into stillness. We pray the words from Psalm 46 that Pastor Steve read, be still and know that I am God. As we breathe in, let's silently pray, be still and know. On our out breath, let's silently pray, that I am God. In breath, be still and know. Out breath, that I am God. Let's silently pray this prayer for a moment. God, we come to you in stillness and in knowing that you are God and that only in you can our souls find rest, peace, and finally joy. Be our refuge, strength, and help in all that troubles us. O come, O come, Emmanuel. A reading from Psalm 42. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. 
My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food, day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and Harriman, from Mount Miser, deep calls to deep as the thunder of cataracts. All your waves, your billows have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully? Because the enemy oppresses me. As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me continually, where is your God? Why you are cast down, O my soul? and Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. We are all burden bearers. Some of us carry our burden silently. We don't want to be a bother. Somebody else always has it worse than we do. But perhaps our silence is really a fear that nobody will care if we share what is weighing us down so. Some of us are very open about our burdens. We might complain and moan to anyone who will listen about what is not right in our lives. But perhaps this oversharing is our fear that nobody will care about us unless we make a lot of noise. Honesty is so important when we name our burdens. We need to name what we bear. We also need to name what we are truly bearing deep down underneath our more obvious burdens. In the psalm that Pastor Katie just read, the psalmist dug deep within his soul to understand what he was most honestly burdened by. Yes, he was thirsty and longing for God, but even more, he is taunted and haunted by the question, where is your God? Yes, he can remember when life was good, but even more, he is bearing a disquieted soul, one that is cast down within him Perhaps that might be what we would call depression. Yes, God is his rock, but he also asked God, why have you forgotten me? This honesty of naming our burdens allowed him to actually lay them down. We can't set down what we don't even know we're carrying. Naming his burdens allowed him to kindle some hope because it gave him the freedom to hope in God. When you arrived here this afternoon, you picked up a leaf. Get your leaf and look at it for a moment. Someone said as, as they picked out their leaf, wow, it's very delicate. That may be how you are feeling right now, that you're feeling you could just snap into. That's part of your burden, isn't it? 
What if you let this leaf be the symbol of those burdens, those honest burdens that you are carrying? Think about that for a moment with your leaf. What if it represents those things that are beneath the more obvious burdens? Now the wonderful thing about trees is they know when it's time to let go of their leaves. You too can let go of your burdens, but of course, just like the tree, it's when the time is right. A summer storm isn't the right time. The coming of autumn, yes. Take your leaf home with you today and put it where you can look at it and remember that it is a symbol of what your burdens are. And you can always add to those burdens. If you want to take an extra leaf when you leave today, if you feel so burdened, take an extra leaf. But then when the time is right, let your leaf go. The Cedar River is a wonderful place or some creek to throw that leaf when it's time to let it go. Bury it, burn it, just let the wind carry it. But when the time is right, you will know and you can let down your burdens with your leaf. If you join me in prayer, please. Loving shepherd, as a thirsty deer longs for flowing streams, our souls long for you and the peace only you can give. Walk beside us, carrying our burdens with and for us as we trust in your steadfast love that is our song even in the night. Give us hope that we will once again praise you. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Psalm 146, verses 5 through 10. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Opening to God's grace. Well, what is grace? 
What is God's grace? And how do we open ourselves to the grace of God? I suppose there are a number of theological definitions of grace, God's grace, but today isn't about the scholarly or the theological. So today I'd like to share a poem as a way to open us to the possibilities of grace by Daniel Ladinsky, who wrote it in the manner of St. Francis of Sisi and is called The Sacraments. I once spoke to my friend, an old squirrel about the sacraments. He got so excited and ran into a hollow in his tree and came back holding some acorns, an owl feather, and a ribbon he had found. And I just smiled and said, yes, dear, you understand. Everything imparts God's grace. Everything imparts God's grace. Everything holds the possibility of being an opening, of being a possibility of God's grace, God's goodness, truth, beauty, and present with us as Emmanuel. The words read from the psalm give us a framework in which to go deeper into our soul's need for grace. There are many ways we are prisoners, blind, bow down strangers, orphans, widows. There are many ways of grace that set us free, many ways of grace that open our eyes, lift us up, watch over and uphold us. And these are the ways of grace because we cannot do them for ourselves, which is so very hard for us to remember without despair. But notice how these words of grace are held between the beginning of our story and the end that really is not an end. From the psalm, our hope is in the Lord, our God, who made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who will reign forever. Our lives are bookended by the God who created all things and the God who keeps faith forever and reigns forever. So what do you long to receive? What gifts of grace of God do you seek? So I invite you to take your candle and reflect on that candle as a symbol of the grace that you long for. Just take a moment. What do you long to receive? What presence and gift of God do you seek? We pray. Jesus, Redeemer, you know the graces we each need. And so we boldly ask you to grant us mercy, blessing, song, justice, fullness of life, insight, confidence, and freedom from all that binds us in pain and loneliness and sorrow. For our hope is in you. And we join and say, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. And the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the booths of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Please pray with me. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, we are the people who are walking in darkness, and we wait in hope for the light. Shine the light of hope more and more each coming day into our lives, so that we may shine brightly as your people of hope. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen. I invite you to take out your candle and hold it, for it is unlit at this time. It holds possibilities. Hope, like grace, is difficult to define or even describe. When good things aren't happening and bad things are, our hope dies. We lose hope. We don't know how things will or should end. And even when we think we do, sometimes there's not a clear path for us to follow. It is confusing, it is hard, and our hope is lost. But this is when we realize that hope, hope with a, a capital H, is different from hopes. I'm going to say that again. But this is when we realize that hope is different from hopes. Hope invites us to have an openness to the possibilities of God's grace. Hope is an attitude and a place to stand in our hardships as we remember God's faithful love, God's promise to dwell with us now and always. We are indeed people who have walked in darkness, but we can see a great light a great light of hope, especially when we are still, when we name our burdens, our loss, our unknowns, and then open ourselves to the possibility of grace. Together, we are those who have lived in a land of deep darkness, and you may find yourself living there right now. Yet God has shined a great light upon you. Even in your own darkness, God shines. For a child has been born for us, this child Emmanuel, God with us, this is now our hope. In the book of John, we hear this good news, that this child of life, light is life. Life that is in a light this light of all people looking at your candle, claiming and naming your own light. God shines light into the darkness. The darkness cannot overcome him. For us, God shines light upon us, in us, and through us. Our candles are images of God's grace, the possibilities of that grace, the promise of that grace when light appears. These are all images of light shining in your darkness and giving you a hope. Now we will light our lights, welcome the hope of rejoicing. In the tenderness of this moment, I just invite you to pause, no rush, looking upon your candle, and what is lit, you hold it still. And that dry candle, that candle that has no light, will be lit behind, by a candle that is vibrant and has hope, bringing hope to all of us now.
We light candles as a sign of our hope in Jesus, God with us. And although this is but a small little candle, may it light your heart, knowing God with you. Together, we hold our candle. And I'm going to invite you together with me on the count of three, one, two, three, we will simply blow this candle out. One, two, three. Knowing God's light is within and God's hope is forevermore. Before we hear this closing blessing, I invite you to remain with us for a time of reflection and re uh, reception to share stories with one another. So just stay, feel no rush, stay in this space, just find peace. And now our closing blessing. I cannot tell you how the light comes. What I know it is that it is more ancient than imagining that it travels across an astounding expanse to reach us, that it loves searching out what is hidden, what is lost, what is forgotten or in peril or in pain, that it has a fondness for the body, for finding its way towards flesh or tracing the edges of form or shining forth through the eye, the hand and the heart. I cannot tell you how the light comes but that it does, that it will, that it works its way into the deepest dark that enfolds you. Though it may seem long ages in coming, arrive in a shape you did not foresee. And so, may we think of this time and let this night turn ourselves toward it. May we lift our faces to let it find us. May we bend our bodies to follow the arc it makes. May we be open and more open and still more open to the blessed light that comes. Amen. <laughs>